brief meditation for you. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I want to talk about a story that I heard only a week ago that struck me as being a wonderful example of what it means to kindle a light in darkness. This is a conversation that we've been having for the past four weeks as we lit one by one the candle of hope, peace, joy, and love. In a time in our world when there is so much turmoil, in a time in our lives when we be struggling economically or in our relationships or in some other way, thinking about how God is with us in the darkness, making the darkness holy and bringing light to us, a tangible light that actually changes things, is actually a wonderful exercise and it's a gift. I want to tell you the story of a family who made a difference in this valley. I was visiting the Tin Mountain Conservation Center just a week ago. And I took a tour of the Great Hall, which is a beautiful structure, part of a wonderful building that is green and sustainable and focused on an amazing cause, educating people about the environment right here in the Mount Washington Valley. But what struck me about this particular room was that when you look down the hall beyond the rafters, at the very end of it was a fireplace. It's built of local stone. It's a big fireplace, the kind of place that you want to go warm your hands when it's cold, where you want to have huge groups of people gathered, enjoying the heat and the warmth and the flames. The special thing about this fireplace is that all the stones, although each one is different, and all are local except for one. As you look up the fireplace, there are a couple that are flat, and they've been carved. But then you look a little bit higher up, where the chimney begins to taper, and there's a white, flat-ish stone set deep into the, the fireplace, into the chimney. And that stone to me looked like a star shining out across the room. It was such a startlingly different color and texture from everything else. And the reason that that stone is there, standing out, is because about the time that they were building this building, there was a family connected to these communities in our valley whose son died. He was in his early 20s. They're a very active family. And they've gone camping a lot and they cared about the environment and they're connected to the Tin Mountain Conservation Center. Out of their darkness, they chose to focus on building something that would be a legacy that lived beyond their son's vital years and would change other lives as well. And so they asked, to work with the mason that was building that fireplace. They helped choose the stones and design how it would be laid up, course by course and stone by stone. And they brought the white stone that stands out like a star from the place where they had gone camping together in Maine. And they set it high up in the chimney as a celebration of all the memories and times that they had shared with their son, and as a remembrance of the importance that his life held for them, and the fact that they could take this particular time and this very difficult challenge that they were living with, and they could turn it into something meaningful and beautiful that shone light, literally shone light, out into a room, out into a valley, out into a world that is in need of caring about its environment and touching other lives and educating and advocating for something that they cared about. When God comes into the world and we talk about hope, peace, 
joy, and love. Listen to the words tonight. Know that you are shaped. You are formed in the image of God. Loved just as you are. And that you are children of light. The invitation is to seize the opportunity to carry that light within you and back out into the world again. God brought light into the world, but God doesn't do the work of keeping the world alight by himself, herself. That work is shared among all of us. So tonight, listen to the scriptures and the words that are shared with you, and know that the promise of each of these lights that we set aflame is tangible and real. It has expectations for how this world can change and be shaped by each one of us because we are each the hands and feet, the heart and mind of God. And when we look into each other's faces, we are still children of light who have the possibility of changing one life and carrying one light. But at the end of the service tonight, when we all light our individual candles and we hold them up, see how this space is transformed when we all light our own individual candle and we all shine our own individual spark together. That is the invitation of Advent. That is the invitation of God's arrival in the world and God's presence with us, transforming us and transforming our world. Thanks be to God.